Welcome to your Ultima Life Podcast, where we help you break free from mediocrity and create a life of purpose, prosperity, and joy. Get your free video series at yourultimatelife.ca. Hello there, and welcome to this episode of Your Ultimate Life. Welcome to Your Ultimate Life. Uh, As you know, often I interview people on this show that have different ways that they're achieving their lives of purpose, prosperity, and joy, and I love bringing that to you. Today, we're blessed to have a special guest, Denise Ropp. Uh, Denise, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kellen. This is awesome. Now, I said your name right, right, Rob? You certainly did. Oh, good, yeah. because when you have a name like Kellen Flukiger, you pay attention to that sort of stuff. <laughs> um, I hear you. So, now, you happen to live in Alberta, and I, in, in prov- the province of Alberta in Canada, for those who listen to this in other parts of the world. And uh, I do, too. And that was interesting when we first discovered this. You live in a city I used to live in, in Calgary, and I live in Edmonton. So nice to be neighbors. <laughs> it is nice. It is nice. It's very nice. Yeah. So the first one, the first question that, that kicks us off, I'd like to ask you to just describe in whatever detail makes sense, how does Denise add good to the world? Ooh, what a great question. Um, and you know what? It really is, uh, it's part of me. It's, it's, I get up in the morning and I'm typically looking for ways that I can serve. Um, so that's a big part of my ethos, uh, but I do it through my values. So my values being, um, I'm all about empowering people. I'm all about being curious. So asking people lots of questions, um, to help them deal with what they deal with. And then bringing a lot of compassion and love to the to the relationship that I'm working with. Um, my background, of course, has been in healthcare. For pretty much my entire life, I've been had some hand in 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 the healthcare industry. So whether it's in nursing or having been a patient or owning and operating clinics or corporate wellness for mental health. All of those things have been about how can I empower people? How can I, you know, get them to be a little bit curious about what the possibilities are for them and and then helping them take the steps forward to do that. You know, the healthcare obviously is all about all for people with heart and love and in, in multiple different ways. And you mentioned a number of things that you've done. How did you get started in the healthcare to start with? Like what, what said, gee, I need to be in, in healthcare. What made you decide to do that? Um, okay. Well, <laughs> some of it was age, um, just the, the time that I was actually looking at it. But the other thing was when I was, when I was small, like I said, I was in, I was a patient right from age three up. So, um, I was really in, you know, in the hospital on a regular basis. So I saw nurses, I saw doctors, I saw all of the parts of the hospital. Uh, and then when I was 13, I had a, I had a, an exploratory surgery uh, that went, it was a very interesting exploratory surgery. Um, okay. They were, <laughs> they were exploring in my ear to see what was going on in my ear. But I had a completely different trip, and I ended up having a near-death experience with, with that, uh, with that surgery. So, I really became like healthcare, and 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 I guess the best way to describe it is I always looked at health, thinking, do we really have to go the direction that we end up? Do we really have to be? you know, end up in ICU with a heart attack? Do we really, like, is is that part of our of our destiny or do we have a little bit more control over it? So I really became passionate about that whole health and well-being and being able to live what I'll call, and I don't mean to take it from anybody, but live your best life from a healthcare perspective so that you are literally experiencing a quality of life and well-being no matter what what age or what you happen to be going through so that near death piece that would have sort of permanently welded the you know the other side of the veil as it were with your 
your your earthly experience here. What happened that made an exploratory surgery in your ear kill you? I mean, like where? Nobody starts an exploratory ear surgery and says, "Hmm, you know, where is this going?" So what? Uh, well, not what on an ear, right? No. <laughs> not, not on an ear. You, no. you wouldn't think so. Um, so what happened was, and I, you know, for those people that are, you know, a little traumatized and triggered by, by surgeries, uh, what happened was, of course, they take me, they, I, I remember this very clearly, being rolled into the operating room, getting prepped on the table, they got one arm strapped down with the blood pressure cuff, the other one strapped down with the IV in it, and then, of course, the good old anesthesiologist said, start counting back from 99, and um he gave me too much anesthetic too fast and that's really really what happened um i then very clearly remember just folding up just like a whole tonic seizure happening and literally ripping my arms off of the two two sides of the table that they had me strapped down to and folding up and of course that at that point because that is what anesthetic does. They take you to, to a place where um, they can do all these surgeries and like they can do all the depth of these things. And he took me too far too fast and that's the near-death experience. You know, I, I then find myself in an operating room on a windowsill that's open in an operating room. Like none of this makes sense, but my, right, this is my right, experience, right? right? I'm two stories up, sitting with my legs outside a window sill and a little dove beside me. And I'm like looking out going, that's really cool. And, I, and I'm listening to, like I'm getting the whole experience of, of the other side, of the past the veil. And I remember too clearly looking down and, and seeing the chaos that was going on as they're literally trying to get the IV back in, get the blood pressure cuff back on, get me straightened out um, and pull me back. And I mean, where else, there's no better place to be pulled back from that kind of scenario than in that environment, right? right. Um, I was given the choice and I clearly came back to this side, um, but it was that, so yeah, it kind of really, kind of hooked the whole thing in there. I mean, when you have an experience, you're kind of curious about the environment you had it in. And and I think that's probably another part of why why healthcare, because I'm like really going, okay, well, what really goes on there? What really happens? And it was only years later that I'm like standing in an OR going, yeah, there's no windows. <laughs> there's, right, right. And, so, you know, and they're certainly not open. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were, you were given a choice and you... You know, I mean, that that kind of a traumatic experience could make someone hate doctors, hospitals and everything else. But instead, it drew you into caring and being concerned and, you know, loving people. And you've spent now, I don't know how many years, many in, in various many. healthcare capacities. Uh, yeah. And you said, you know, clinics and uh, a nurse and being a nurse and all that kind of stuff. So what do you after after having that experience and having it then draw you into healthcare as opposed to repelling you away and never want to see any of this stuff again uh, and then deciding to to you know love and serve through that today when you find yourself uh, having done all those things what is your relationship today with the rich texture of experience you have with healthcare how do you i'm sure it's more expansive than the narrow definition tell me about your relationship to healthcare today my relationship with healthcare today is really um, as and and this is a hot topic. I mean, and it doesn't matter where you are in the world. You know, the state of healthcare systems within within pretty much every country is mm -hmm. is pretty dire. It's very expensive. We're all out of out of patients, um, and I mean that from the you know having enough wherewithal to deal with people. Um, What's happening in healthcare right now is so fascinating. It's so fascinating. Um, we have access to doing things and helping people in ways we've never, never, ever had before and changing people's lives for the better in quite simple and cost-effective ways. 
it of course is meaning to actually you got to let one system die so that when another one can come but the the opportunities that we have to give people the quality of life that they really can have like the changes in rehab that have happened over the years the changes in in the control that you have over your own health and well-being um just from things you wear on your wrist or or devices that you might wear to help you sleep um th there's just so many things that are available to us to actually improve our, our health and well-being and this is where this is where it gets really exciting and I, I do uh, love the whole medical tech side of things and what's possible I, I was speaking not too long ago I was speaking with a gentleman uh, in the US and we were talking about a device and it can it can change anxiety states and help people with sleep well, if we all got better sleep, we'd all be making better decisions. We, if we weren't in states of anxiety, we'd probably be nicer to each other. There'd be a lot of things that would be would be different than what we currently experience. And so the opportunities, I, I just I look at the opportunities and go, I got to we got to get this stuff into the hands of healthcare professionals, hospitals, into patients' hands, um, because. Why should you have to wait? Why, you know, there's within the current system, there's a line that doctors, they can't do anything below the line. Okay. So, but it often comes across like I'm going, I'll go in um, or patients of mine, clients of mine will go in and they'll say, well, I think I have diabetes. Okay. No, you don't. You're not sick enough yet. You know, that really gets to the idea. You said one system has to die, or at least partially or completely before the other one can come in. And what came to my mind is the difference between healthcare and disease management. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and you're talking about you're not diseased enough to enter the not healthcare system, but we're calling it the healthcare system. And it's really the disease mitigation and management structure that yeah. we have. And uh, mm -hmm. you're not busted enough, so you can't enter to the disease management queue, yet there are still things that could and should be made available to you to increase your quality of life and actually do health care as opposed to waiting till you're a lot sicker before we handle anything. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, that's pretty much it. People have to wait. I had I had one lady, um, she had back her, you know, your discs and can can impinge on, on each other. She was at a 40% a impingement, which was painful and causing her a lot of walking problems and that kind of thing. And her neuro neurosurgeon said, I can't do anything until you're 70% impinged. And I'm like, okay, so, <laughs> so what are you gonna do for that 30%? Like how, you do you wait um, and, and ultimately get to that point or do you, try and figure out what the steps are to 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 reverse that and go the other direction. Well, so educate me a little bit. Let's use this for a little bit of teaching. I love it because that's something that, for me, that's near and dear to my heart. I mean, I've got uh, this disc narrowing between L3 and L4 and L4 and L5 on the right side. And a year ago, I went on a bike ride and came back with severe pain and it was wrecked and I had to go to the hospital, uh, the ER mm -hmm. for a day to get you know, IV drips to get the pain under control. And I've been doing physical therapy for a year. So tell me what the, so educate me uh, and, and the listeners, what, 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 so what should we do? So he's saying, I can't operate or do whatever it is he had in mind until you're 75% busted, you're 40% busted. So what is the thing? Educate me on what's, what is available, what's possible. So, so this this person in in particular, um, she did have benefits. So we have to be clear on that. So I did say to her, "What are your benefits?" She says, "Well, I've got uh, acupuncture, Cairo, and physio, and massage." Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the way we typically will do it is we will go to the um, to one of those providers, and we because we feel comfortable with that particular modality. Um, 
we'll go to that particular provider and use up all of our benefits. And then we'll go to the, you know, another one and try that. And then we'll go to another one. And I said to her, um, this lady in particular, I said, okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to go and the first person you're going to see is your acupuncturist. And she went, okay. Um, and then I said, the next one, and as soon as possible after that, you're going to go see the Cairo. And then as soon as possible after that, you're going to go and see the physio. And then you're going to go and see the massage therapist. Then they're going to start the circle again, back to the acupuncturist, back to the Cairo, back to the physio, back. And you're going to do it in that order. And you're going to do whatever homework they give you. And you're going to tell them, this is what I'm doing. And she called me two weeks later. And she said, because she'd gone through the cycle twice. And she said, I can walk without pain anymore. And it was literally because she'd gone to the acupuncturist who really had released the neural plexus, so the nerves, mm -hmm. the things that were holding things tight like that. She'd then gone to the Cairo who structurally changed the skeletal system so that it could help support the neural system. The physio then worked with the muscles on holding that Thing there and then the massage was like oh yeah no this is about how we're we're establishing that in place right so mm -hmm. it literally took two visits from each of those providers and she was well on her way to being better again so is, is it is it that we don't have a is the thing that's missing somebody to suggest what you did to say well this is the right order to mm -hmm. do this you can do this 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 and these seven things you could do these two or three probably won't help but these three or four might, and so let's do them and do them in this order to see if we can address it just the way you've described it. Is that what's missing? Yeah, usually. Because the the this, the healthcare system itself works in silos. So, you know, there's the doctors and then there's the chiros and the, the, and, the, and they don't often understand even how they work together. So they can't direct you. Um, so you need somebody like, and... and I, I call it a health navigator. That's one of the things I do. Um, there are other health navigators out there. They can literally take someone, if they'll, you know, okay, so the intake is, what are your symptoms? What are you trying to, to deal with here? Um, and, and how can we actually facilitate an improvement in the numbers? So how can I work the team? And to me, that really is, you're the team leader, you. You know, in your healthcare, you're the team leader. Right. So it's really about how do I put put you at the center? This is an empowerment thing. Right. Because for the most part, our healthcare providers think they're the team lead. They they do. The in fact, they don't they don't they don't treat you in a way that you know they might inform you of stuff at a level of high. You know, assuming you don't understand anyway. Often, not always. But, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to tell you what you need and hope you understand it. Yeah, whatever. But this is still what you need. And the way you've described it is enough education and, and involvement that you literally can function as a team lead and you understand what's going on with your own back, leg, arm, ear, toe, whatever it is. Exactly. Exactly. So when I work with people, I first find out where do they want to go? What, you know, what are your goals for your health? Then I... I say, okay, who's who's on your team? Like, who are who are your doctors, your chiros, your pastors, your your best friend you walk with? Like, who are, who are the people that are there to support you? And and what roles do they play? And that's not always, you know, your partner or your 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 cousins or you know the other people that live under your roof or or that kind of thing. And there are reasons for that. But well, you've asked a bunch of interesting questions, friends. Your pastor, your friend, you walk with. I mean, you've included a whole uh, uh, collection, potential collection of of related things. So keep going. So so find out who the team is. So first, what's your goals? Who's your team? And then look at the realistic. You know what what is it that you're dealing with? Is is it diabetes? Is it fatty liver disease? Is it um, you know, discs in your back. What, what, and what does that mean from a from a physiological, biological perspective 
but also I will pull in, you know, different modalities, different health modalities, like the 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 system that we regularly deal with. So the the healthcare system, um, that's what we call allopathic medicine. Right. So that's traditional medical, right? Mm -hmm. But then what about Ayurvedic? What about Chinese? What about chiropractic? What about um, all of these? Other, what, what do they say about that particular spot? So once we collect all of that information about what's really going on there, we can then do four, which is create a plan and create a plan that is specific and directed at a particular goal. So it's not like a haphazard kind of thing, you know, like I'm going to try carnivore diet or I'm going to going to right. be gluten free or I'm going to, you know, go go try this particular exercise plan or whatever. It's very very directed. We put that into place and then we'll run it. And then step 5 is the whole rinse and repeat. Did right. we, you know, you take an analysis, where am I at? Did Where's my goals? What's, yeah, well, yeah. yeah did, it's, work, it, right. <laughs> did it work? What worked? What didn't work? You right, know, right, right. what do we need? What, what other people do we need on the team? So how many navigators, like I've never heard of a health navigator. So how, how many health navigators are there? Is that like you alone or are there millions or are there a dozen or like? Oh, uh, there's in very Canada, few of in us. The world? Like there's, <laughs> there's. Uh, I know of uh, four of us in Alberta. So four of us here, one one in uh, Vancouver. <laughs> okay. Cool. A couple in Ontario. Like there's there's very few of us. Um, and there's two, like I come at it from a healthcare background. So I come at it from the nursing side of things, understanding mm -hmm. how the healthcare system works. The there are a lot of people who go through a particular uh, they've been a caregiver. As an example, there's one lady uh, who I know who knows the healthcare system as it relates to children um, with a particular horrific disease. Mm -hmm. So she knows, okay, these are the questions you have to ask. These are the things you have to set up. So it, she's very specific. I'm more general because I'm coming at this from a from an overall, but yeah. there there are different different backgrounds. Um, in the U.S., they, there are a few more. Um, it's a bigger country, <laughs> um, but there's still a need for this to figure so how out. Does somebody, how that, does somebody find you or find somebody? I mean, if it isn't you and they're in Ontario or Vancouver, like no one, I would never have known to go look up health navigator. You know, I wouldn't have like LinkedIn sales navigator. I know that navigator, right? But I don't know <laughs> health navigator or health guide or holistic you know, health gurus. I, I, I wouldn't have even known how to find that. So what would somebody do that's curious about taking a holistic and guided approach to actual health care? You know, you can look at it. Uh, some of some of my, my friends call themselves health advocates. So they can look up health advocate for their, their area. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, the lady in, uh, lady in Vancouver, She's very specific about just Vancouver because she actually goes to appointments with people. She oh, wow. does, she, yeah, so she really helps out that way. Mm -hmm. I could do that too, but only for obviously for geographically. Um, but if people are looking for a health navigator or, or an advocate, they can call them up and they can say, or they can send them an email um, and say, you know, can you do this for this area? I can work in North America. I'm, mm -hmm. you know, that's not a problem. Uh, but if somebody wants the in-person appointments where I go to the doctor's office or the various appointments, um, and that typically is age-related specifically because you're concerned about your parents or whatever and say, right, sure, you know, sure. you live, yeah, you live in Edmonton. I live in Calgary. It's quite close, but to take a day off to come down and look after, you know, your aging parent is challenging. Right. Right. Sure. So, but a lot of people have to do that, or they can call somebody like me. Um, they can connect with me via uh, Denise at whitecedarclinic.com. They can email me. Um, and well, I want to get I'm just a minute. I want to get all that, but I yeah. want to get more. But before yeah. we 
So say that again, Denise at WhiteCedarClinic.com. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. I want to tell you, everybody listening to, to write that down, because she's not just for Calgary and not just for Alberta. If, if she isn't the right person, she can at least give you some instruction about yeah. how to find somebody in your universe, in your area. So whether it's for yourself, for an aging relative, I mean, my wife's mother lives with us, she's 92, and we work from home, so we get to, my wife goes with her to all these things. But I certainly understand the need that you're talking about and how that would be so valuable, and especially with an aging population. Denise, I want to make sure, because I know you do lots of things. And so I want to also find out, like we've spent this whole time talking about your healthcare background and what you do right now that's a very interesting specialty. Are there other things that we should be talking about to, to give a good picture of how Denise interacts with, serves, and adds good to the world, or just to stick with this healthcare? <clears throat> well, I, I am very much because of the I, I'm I'm constantly curious and I'm constantly trying to help the people that I work with. So sometimes I end up doing what I'll call relationship brokering, and that is in the in the world of oh, okay, you're an accountant. What do you need, and who can I hook you up with? Um, or um, another an. There's a whole bunch of areas that I actually do that in just because of the people that I've run into. Um, but one of the others is in is in medical tech. So I'm I'm connecting with a lot of healthcare providers who want to change their their opportunities with their with their patients. So, and what I mean by that is that. There is so much happening with the technology that we have, whether it's, you know, the monitors that we walk around with on our wrists. Um, to I know a pharmacist thing... who has remote blood pressure monitoring. Is that the kind yeah. of thing you're talking about? Go ahead. Yep. Well, we can, it's, it's that, but we can also take it to the next step, mm -hmm. which is we can actually provide treatment through some of these devices as well. Oh, wow. So as an example, yeah, as an example, um, one of the companies that I work with is a, it's a company called Apollo Neuro, and it's it's really neat. It is a, a smart band mm -hmm. that helps people with anxiety and with sleep. And it helps by sending vibrations through the fascia. So for those people that are out there that know what fascia is, it's a part of the body that holds us up and holds us, but it runs throughout our entire body. Sending vibrations along it can... The, the appropriate ones can actually calm a person, can actually help them get to sleep better. And this device, it's a medical device in the US. And, and so as soon as, as all of that is tied up and everything, which will be next month, um, we'll be able to bring it into Canada as a medical device mm -hmm. and be able to help people through the use of a device so that they can make those better decisions so that they can have that better sleep. But the neat thing about it is it will pair with your smartwatch or your aura ring or your Fitbit or one of those other lovely things and be able to look at the measurements and then be able to pair what needs to happen throughout the day to make you have a better day. Oh, wow. So I want you to repeat a little bit of that. So my understanding then is it's a piece of gear. You, you wear it like I have a Fitbit. Okay, yay, here's my Fitbit. Yep. And so either I switch devices or something or a pa I don't know all the details, but I can wear a different device or it's a piece of software. But I must have to wear a different device if it sends something in me, right? So you can wear a different device. So the the, <laughs> the Apollo can actually go here on your wrist like this, mm -hmm. or it can be clipped on another part of your body, like um, as long as it's close to where the fascia is and there's comes to the surface. So there's lots of places where that is. Mm -hmm. um, but And it can be very discreet. You wouldn't know. Um, or you can wear it on your ankle. I mean, it's all of that. Oh, so cool. you continue to wear your watch uh -huh. and... This keeps track of all of your biometrics. And believe me, it's more than just the, the number of steps um, and what your heart rate is and what your temperature is and, and that kind of stuff that you see when you look at your watch. Right. There's a ton of information behind that that's all being tracked. 
So what the, the Apollo does is it's able to actually go, okay, we can look at that information, see when it gets out of whack, and then be able to program when the Apollo needs to come on so that it recognizes, oh yeah, it's 8.30 in the morning and you're on your drive uh, on your way to work and you're beginning to have a bit of a panic attack, we're gonna actually calm you down so through the vibrations so that you can actually have a better drive um, and everybody around you can have a better drive too, so. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. When how will, how will people be able to find out about when that's, I mean, you said it's already in the US, how would somebody find it in the U.S. and how will I or others be able to find it here in Canada? Um, so um, right now they can contact me again, again, um, and I'm happy to let people know where that is. Um, and when that is, I am expecting it with so this May now. So I, I do expect it by the end of June to have mm -hmm. all of that. They can currently go on um, Apollo Neuro. Uh, dot com, I believe is what it is, and order it. But I mean, then you're paying the duty and all that kind of stuff. So sure. trying to avoid all that. So yeah, 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 yeah. Apollo Neural. Wow, that's an incredible thing. So uh, to to sort of wind this up, tell me what is it that is really on your heart? Like, what would you love to see? And we started with how do you add good to the world? And we talked a lot about your health care and your specialty and your navigation and now your connection with this amazing new device <clears throat> that does all kinds of amazing things what is what do you hope to create this the rest of this year for example what are you all about you know there's a one great question where where my heart really lies is helping uh -huh. is helping people really see that they the, the power and the light that they have inside them and that it really they are much more powerful than they think they possibly are. And we can, we can tap into that. We can literally tap into how amazing we are and be able to shine that light out there for, for everybody around us. Well, I love that. And that certainly resonates with the idea of your ultimate life, <clears throat> creating a life. Uh, that you really love and are doing good and adding good to the world, serving with that yearning and gifts that we have. Denise, I want to mm -hmm. thank you for sharing what you do and most of all for sharing who you're being with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Kellen. You are awesome. And I, I, I mean, I love the fact that you're just up the road, but I also have, you know, just connected with you and, uh, and look forward to lots more chatting and talking fabulous about what, so i want you to give your contact one more time what is that way to get a hold of you the way to get a hold of me is denise at whitecedarclinic.com they can connect with me on linkedin as well excellent so denise ropp r-o-p-p -P, or denise at whitecedarclinic.com if you have curious curiosity about what the process is health navigation how to find that kind of help in your own area if you're curious about the apollo Neural device, I am. I'm going to look it up and have some more conversations with Denise later. So I want you to go back and listen to this. You've, you've seen a woman with passion. You've seen a woman who clearly knows what she's about and is trying and succeeding at adding good to the world and serving those around her through a multitude of ways. And here's the key that she said at the end. You have the ability to make a difference. You have the ability to take your life and experience and yearnings wherever you are and whatever's happened and move forward a little at a time or a lot at a time, but to go forward and create your ultimate life. Open your heart in this time around. Stand. Thank you for listening to today's episode. We hope that you take it deeply into your heart and decide for yourself how you can create anything you desire. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to this podcast and share it with your friends. As always, we'd love to hear your feedback and topic suggestions. Until tomorrow, this is Your Ultimate Life with host Kellen Flukiger. Stand with your heart in the sky and your feet